Ja, Upsala. Bitte können ich die Fotografen und die Kameraleute bitten, sich hinzusetzen und bitte kein Blitzlicht. Please, Please don't everybody sit flash. down. Please sit down so we can start a press conference. Thank you very much. Dankeschön. Setzen Sie sich hier vorne bitte auch. Could you please sit down here in front? Well, the people at the front also sit And down, please. please. Do not use the flash during the press conference. Bitte kein Blitzlicht während no der press conference. No flashlights during the press conference, please. Thank you. Kann ich Sie auch bitten, sich hinzusetzen? Danke. Could I ask you two, please, to sit down? Please. Okay. Please. Okay. Herzlich willkommen zur Right. Welcome to the press conference on the film The Missing Screening and Competition. Berlinale, The Missing, and have a welcome for the director Ron Howard. Also have a welcome for Kate Blanchett. And let's welcome Kate Blanchett. Ja, Ihre Fragen bitte da hinten. Ist Your questions, Frage? please. There's one right at the back. On the right side. Yeah. Could you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Oh, so, thanks. I'm Vicky Feiler from Hamburg. And my question is to you, Ron Howard. The, um, this morning, one of the German papers quoted your film as, um, let me translate it, uh, metaphysical western. Did you read that? <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm wondering is, um, it's a little bit departure from your whole career. Mm -hmm. um, what, tell me about what drove you to make this movie. Uh, well, it, it's, it's a difficult film to label, and I'm as, I'm as uh, in, intrigued and satisfied by that label as, as, uh, as any. Uh, One of the things that fascinated me about the subject was that, uh, while certainly it's a Western, uh, I felt that it uh, was really dealing with the possibilities of the region and the era in an interesting way. Uh, an unusual set of characters to be at the center of a traditional Western, rare that a female character is as strong as Kate's um, in, a, in, a, in a film set in that time period. And yes, there's a spiritual element an element that uh, connects rather easily politically to things that we're, that we're all facing today. Uh, and, uh, and I also felt that in terms of tone, it was more psychologically driven and suspenseful uh, than, um, than what one traditionally expects from the, from the genre. So it was, a gr it was an exciting challenge, and, uh, uh, you know, and I, I had a wonderful time making, making the film and telling, telling the story. Eine Frage hier, bitte. Yeah. Question by Hannah Lobel from the Associated Press. My question is to both of you. Do you expect a warmer reception in Europe for the film among critics and moviegoers? And if so, why not? Why not? Um, you know, I don't, I think I've, uh, um, how do I say this? I, I've been, <laughs> I think I've been at this long enough to sort of, uh, re, to uh, uh, decline to expect much. Uh, that, and, um, uh, you know, the, I think country to country, uh, you know, the, the, the critical community responds however they're going to respond. And I don't, I don't pretend to be able to predict it. <clears throat> and I also don't make the films in anticipation of a particular response. I, I really just, you know, believe in the story and do the very best I can. Uh, and yes, I always hope for the best. I always hope that, uh, that everyone is going to respond 100% uh, with the affection uh, that I feel for the film. And, but, uh, it, you know, in, in the real world, that's not always the case. But so, you know, I, I, and I also hope that more than anything, whatever the critical response, uh, I, you know, I hope that audiences will find their way to, the, to, to see the film. Because again, I just believe in the story. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Question over there on the right side. 
Hi, my name is Greg Posales, freelancing journalist. Um, this room is for Kay Blanchett. Uh, first of all, thanks very much for giving Frodo all the power to get the ring to border and destroy hey, it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have two questions actually. One is uh, very much related to the movie, the other one is a little more tabloid. First question to the movie. Uh, this is, I think, the first Western you've been doing. What is fascinating you in this genre, the Western, especially this one, because it's an unusual Western, a nice one? Look, I must admit, I was n not particularly au fait with the genre. It was a, my father is from Texas, and I grew up hearing John Wayne films bouncing and shooting away and, you know, on a Sunday afternoon. But it was always a very male-dominated genre for me, and um, it's a very optimistic genre, I think, which is um, interesting. It's, um, it's no coincidence, I think, they're set in deserts because it's a very introspective place where you're where um, man, and in this case woman, um, gets to pit themselves not only against themselves but against other human beings. And I think there is, um, for me, what interested me was the way Ron was talking about um, not only how passionate you were about the genre, I think you came out of the womb wanting to delve into this world, but, but also um, just how, how much of a departure this was um, in that you have three interesting um, across the generations, uh, female characters, literally and metaphorically riding alongside the, the male characters. Um, and I think, as Ron was saying, the emotional and psychological depth to the characters were, was, uh, for me, a lot richer than perhaps, you know, one traditionally sees in the Western, but never once did it sacrifice the suspense and the thrill of the chase. So it was a, it was a, um, a journey into the unknown for me. Now for the tabloid question. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> lots of stars, uh, actually we are warned this, us journalists to be warned this, lots of stars have been cancelling. Uh, Jude Law didn't show up, Nicole Kidman, Nick Nolte won't show up. We're very happy that you actually showed up. So I'm the ring in. <laughs> <laughs> and as we all know, you are expecting. So I was wondering if you might even win a bear for your performance, which I think you actually should. Well, because I'm the only one here. No. <laughs> because you've done, again, you've done a nice job. But the thing is, you're not, I think you're not allowed to fly right now. So if you would win the bear, could you make it back in time to actually receive Oh, of course it? I'm allowed to fly. I wouldn't be here if I, if I wasn't. I didn't swim. <laughs> <laughs> so you are allowed to fly. Yeah, and, and look, let's face it, with a two-year-old son, I got more sleep last night than I have in the last two years. So this is, frankly, <laughs> a holiday. It's like Club Med for me. So, no, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Okay. Question on the left side, please. Um, Benjamin Clone, um, freelancer. Um, here. Hmm. Kate Benjamin, oh, you look fantastic tonight. Thank your, you. Your hair is great. And your performance was fantastic. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, and it's rem it is remarkable how you manage it all. So how is, how is your boy? How is your, how is your child? He's, he's well. Thank you. Very well. <laughs> Question over there on the right side. Marius Sikri, uh, NDR Radio. Mrs. Blanchett, uh, I was... Uh, here I am. Sorry, I'm um, not blind. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> um, what I wondered, how did you prepare for the skills you have to show in the movie and how long did it take you to, uh, well, get used to the country life in that way? Yes, I'm quite urban. I don't like to be too far away from an espresso machine. Um, but I promised Ron I could do it. And I think when you make a promise to Ron Howard, you have to deliver. And there's, I mean, it's very different than going on a holiday and, and thinking you might horse ride. When you know the cameras are going to roll in six weeks, you've got to be able to bloody well do it. And particularly when you're, when you're riding alongside someone like Tommy Lee, who's a consummate horseman and knows everything there is to know about the Southwest. So, um, I mean, he was an enormous lexicon for, for me and was really generous with his knowledge. And also from a character perspective, just realizing the different character choices you could make, the different ways you could hold your reins. And I mean, so he was very helpful from, from that perspective. But I did just ride out every day for hours and hours with the stunt guys and, um, and the wranglers, all of whom had been Marlboro men. So I was completely in awe of them with their big moustaches. <laughs> um, so it was just a matter of literally bouncing around on the saddle until I could do it. And um, I think when I set my mind to something, I'm quite that's determined. <laughs> and also, I mean, Ron um, asked me to have a tarantula crawl on me um, in a scene which he then cut from the film. Um, but when Ron was lying on the ground in the production office having this tarantula on his groin saying, see, it's easy! I, I th you can't say no, you just have to do it. <laughs> so, 
you know. And also, I mean, it's it's great. I mean, that's part of the joy of being an actor is that you get to completely and passionately delve into um, a, a part of history and humanity that you don't know anything about. And because it's a very visceral way, you actually um, retain a lot of the knowledge. So, I mean, I, I, I don't think I'll be getting back into the saddle in the next couple of months, but afterwards I hope I will. <laughs> Yeah, your question, please, on the yeah. left side. <coughs> Andreas Mayer, freelancer here in Berlin. Eine andere deutsche yeah. Zeitung hat uh, heute Morgen ihren Film einen Schwanengesang auf Western genannt. Uh, called your film, ein another German newspaper, to repeat, is called your film a Swan Song of the Western Genre. Uh, so my question is, did you want to have a sort of Schwarzenegger effect in this? I mean, there were lots of busts ups and shootouts. I didn't sort of uh, time this, but there are masses of really dangerous situations where uh, the audience sort of loses sight of who's doing what and to whom. And usually, of course, the small minority is, is victorious. Who and why gets shot dead at the moment is not really clear to the audience. It's, in a sense, uh, against all probability that the main actor wins through. I mean, is that what you wanted to achieve? Did you actually see the film? I didn't really get that. Uh, I guess. I think it was insulting. <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, to just to generally answer it, uh, the... Uh, uh, my my feeling with the film was to, I didn't approach it as a genre exercise. I didn't I didn't look at it and say oh, here here's you know my chance to make a western. Even though Kate's right, I I've always loved them, uh, but I, what I really loved about them is more the treatment of the period and the history, and not so much the uh, uh, the, tr the the cinematic traditions. And I think what I liked about this movie was the fact that while it was exciting and I felt uh, suspenseful, that it. Uh, that it also uh, offered an opportunity to create situations which were really relatable in contemporary terms, psychologically, emotionally, politically, as I'd said before. And I also, look, coming off of a, a, a beautiful mind, I, the one thing I learned from that film was that I, I really liked directing actors involved in complex moments. And I loved the fact that Kate and Tommy Lee, uh, their characters, were living through the pain, uh, the trauma uh, of uh, betrayal, uh, and try and this sort of struggle to reconnect, and and they didn't, you know, it was pre-Freud. They didn't have the vocabulary to even understand or articulate quite what they were going through. And I thought it was a great acting opportunity for, you know, someone such as Kate and 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 Tommy Lee to. Uh, to bring a kind of a psychological depth to uh, to uh, a setting which usually operates in a more visceral, exclusively visceral kind of a, um, a plane. Eine Frage hier hinten auf der rechten Seite. Question at the right hand side. Good question. Uh, I am from Shanghai Oriental TV station, and I have uh, two questions about uh, for Ms. Blanchett. And uh, the first is I I like your. Uh, I, I like the scenes of your writing in the movie very much. It's very, very beautiful. And I, I, I want to know, uh, how long is your writing, uh, how long is your training about it? Is it very difficult? How, how long have I been writing? Is your training about writing? Uh, it was intense. Um, I didn't have time to get saddle sore. I, but I did get there. I always like to, when I'm making a film, get there as early as I can. Particularly when you're working, um, when the location is such a big character. Um, as it is in this film. The landscape uh, adds so much to the power of the story that you want to be there to absorb it. And there was a lot to learn. So I did get there a good, I can't remember how, it was quite a long time in advance, because I, I wanted to do it properly. I didn't want to say to Ron, I can't do that, or for him to have to say, I'll fix it up in the edit. And of course, I don't generally tend to read the big print and so I didn't realize that I had the pack horse all the way through. So there, it, there were quite a lot of um, extraneous demands um, that I really did need to know how to ride. Well, and also you kept, you know, in, in every break, the first month that we were filming, and you were continually off, you know, if you had an yeah. hour, it seemed like you were off riding on that ridge somewhere. Yeah, because you know, you, yeah. I mean, you, there are a certain, in the way that one psychologically prepares for a scene, I'd know that next week, I have to do the scene where I'm riding through the ravine to get to gather together four pack horses, and so there's a specific skill I need to learn. So um, it was a constant thing, but I really enjoyed it. So.
Thank you. And uh, the, the second question is, it seems that uh, Berlin International Film Festival uh, is, uh, uh, is more and more close to Hollywood. How do you think about it? It's getting more and more close more to Hollywood. More and more close to Hollywood. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Uh, just like more photographers? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, there are some several <laughs> more and more Hollywood movie uh, oh. into yeah, yeah into Hollywood the body. Yeah. I always find it um, an unpredictable festival, which I like. I find the choices of films year to year. You think, oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen that film, and I feel like it gives voice to a whole range of not only feature films but documentaries that wouldn't perhaps get an airing otherwise. I find the choices very individualistic, so I don't know. Okay, Frage vorne, bitte. Kate, hello. Rachel Turk from Inside Film Australia. Hi. Hi. Um, this film obviously deals with the complex relationship between parent and child, even when that child has herself grown up. How has parenthood helped you, informed you in, in this role? And secondly, I know that we're expecting you home for Little Fish. Do you keep an eye out for films located in Australia and New Zealand so that um, now that you have a family of your own, you can head back that way? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm always looking at what's going on um, in Australia. I mean, the development of the, the Australian film industry is really important to me. Um, and I've long wanted to work with Rowan Woods. I think he's one of the best directors who's emerged um, from Australia in a, in a long time. Um, and what I respect about Rowan is that he works at his own pace. There's a sense that if you have a film like he did with The Boys, which came to the Berlin Film Festival probably about five years ago now, that that's your moment and you have to seize it and make the most of it. Whereas Rowan just thinks, I'm not ready to, to do that thing that everyone expects me to do, so I'm just going to work at my own pace, which I think, with the pressure in the industry now, I think that's a really bold move. Um, and what was the other thing? Parenthood. Yes, parenthood, yeah. Oh, it's what great. It help you? <laughs> what it help you doing the part? Yeah, I'm sure on, on, a, on a subliminal level um, that that mother-child connection was, it must have been strengthened within me because I've actually am undergoing the experience. But there's not the concept and title of mother that every mother, every woman fits into. I think there's a myriad of different ways of parenting and because of Maggie's uh, experience and the hardship of her upbringing and um, her, sen her flinty sense of self-protection, which is very different from, um, I suppose, my own emotional makeup. I think what concerns her as a parent um, are perhaps very different things. Also, I think it's a very different thing, the mother-son relationship to the mother-daughter relationship, which, as we all know, <laughs> is complicated. <laughs> so. You found a bit. Hello, Kirsten Greco, Currents Magazine, Hamburg. My question is for Mr. Howard. And it mentioned in the press notes that one of the aspects that attracted you to this film, other than the Western, was the fact that it had a strong feminine dimension, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. And of course, this r film has several really strong female roles, but that seems to be rather rare in Hollywood these days. Yeah. So I guess my question is, do you have any thoughts or suggestions on how, what might be changed in Hollywood to make this more mm -hmm. of a common occurrence, that mm -hmm. we can have some strong female roles? Well, I, I actually think that this year, I don't know if you agree, Kate, but, but I mean, you know, Kate had two uh, really challenging roles this year, uh, and, uh, and I think, I think there have been a number of, uh, of interesting opportunities for, for women in films this year, for actresses, uh, and, uh, and I, I think that's a great improvement. And, and yeah, it, it, it certainly did attract me uh, to, uh, to this subject. I draw on my own family experiences a great deal, uh, and I'm always looking for a personal connection in a story that may appeal to me for X, Y, or Z reasons. The one thing that can ground it for me that I can understand is family interaction, positive and negative. I've, I've experienced it all uh, in, in, uh, in raising four kids. Uh, and uh, and in being a son myself, so I, th I felt like those those dynamics were f were un were unusual, uh, dramatic, and again um, linked well with a story that has a lot of drive and uh, and and a lot of tension. And I, I mean, as Ron said, I mean I I have had a great year with female roles, a great couple of years actually. But uh, to be fair, I think it does take a director to actually be interested 
in what's going on in a woman's face and to shape the edit of a story that actually um, contains all those intimate, detailed, nuanced moments that I'm sure a lot of actresses give, but maybe they just don't make it onto the s screen. You know, that they don't, that somehow in the edit, it's edited towards the, the, um, it's, the edit becomes more male focused. And I don't know whether that's studio pressure and you're just extremely powerful. <laughs> so you're able to do it. But um, I mean, Ron is one of those directors. So. Auf der linken Seite, bitte. Uh, hello, uh, Harald Mühlbeier, Frames Online. This is a question to Mr. Howard. Uh, in the movie, there are two contrary worlds. There's uh, the world of uh, spiritual wilderness uh, to which uh, the father tends, and there's uh, the, the world of modern techniques uh, with uh, photography and uh, gramophones and so, to which uh, Lily tends. Uh, what did you want to express with it? Um. The, those contrasts were interesting to me, um, and, and it was just a historical fact of life at that time. Uh, the, uh, the film takes place at the very end of uh, a couple of hundred years of, um, of you know, European Anglo um, uh, conquest of the indigenous people. And the Chiricahua Apache people in that region were the very last holdouts. And so it was important to me to not make a movie about that conflict, which has been dealt with many times before, but more the repercussions of that conflict, landing on the shoulders of someone like Maggie, um, in, in dramatically impacting this relationship that she, this complicated relationship she has with her father, and, and the fallout on the Apache people themselves. Uh, and uh, so th the, the fact that <clears throat> the modern age was coming identifiable technological advancement was already in place and yet there was still this circumstance where um, native people, indigenous people were being um, uh, sent away to prison camps, um, you know, uh, killed uh, if seen. Uh, that's a reality of, uh, of, of um, the United States that I didn't want to ignore with this story and it also and again, it all, I always felt the, har the harmonics of this movie worked well. The, th the, the things flowed nicely together. And so if you just get back to the basic idea that this, this is a suspenseful film that audiences can be sort of drawn into and wonder what's going to happen next, well, that's another component. Yes, it's historically accurate, accurate. Yes, it's somewhat political. But it's also very helpful in terms of creating an environment where Maggie and her family are in the utmost jeopardy. So it was interesting to me. Yeah. Your question, please. Yes, hello. I am Nils Amanjasta from Norway. I have some questions for Ron Howard about Apache Indians. How much research did you do on Apache Indians before you made this movie? And were the real Apache Indians playing in the movie? Yeah. And also, what did the Apache community react when seeing this movie? Because I don't get a very good impression of Apache Indians from watching this. Right. Um, okay. Uh, uh, the answer is a great deal of research, but also the you know the novelist had done his research and the first screenwriter then did his, but we continued with our own research, which uh, included the help of uh, a university anthropologist and a, and uh, um, a couple of Apache elders who were quite. Um, impressive, uh, who not only helped us with language and culture, but also discussed the screenplay with us uh, and, uh, and the story. So <clears throat> I, I found in these conversations and in others with other historians and, uh, th that uh, uh, certainly, uh, while this, is a f this story is, is fictional, that um, the moments depicted the violence, uh, that, that there, there was historical you know, precedence for these ideas. And uh, the Apache people acknowledge this. And you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't push the question very far, but I had the feeling that, um, that it was a, a natural consequence in their minds of a, of a state of war. That said, it was very important for me within the film to differentiate the, um, the uh, Apache culture. And um, Kaita and his son are representatives of a tribe. And the band 
of, of uh, raiders and criminals are dominated by uh, the uh, native culture, but they're, they're, they're an individual, they're more like a gang, and they, and they do not... With the, whites among them. With yeah. whites among them, yes. But they are a border kind of a, of a, of a criminal element and don't reflect a particular tribe. And um, that said, the response from the Apache, uh, the, the response has been uh, o really overwhelmingly positive coming from the Apache people. I think mostly they just, they appreciate the authenticity of the presentation. Um, and, uh, and they feel there's a, a kind of balance there that they respect. Here auf der linken Seite, bitte. Hi, Karen Nicole Anhalt from People Magazine. Uh, although this is a Western, I think the, the key thing that the movie makes me think about is, is the role of the parent, the huge responsibility. We've asked Kate Blanchett a few times, I'd like to flog the horse, um, and I'd like to ask you as well, uh, Ron Howard, how do you manage to have uh, a baby, or have a little boy, and be pregnant and work? Do you have an understanding husband? Do you do yoga? Do you, how do you physically manage this? And Ron Howard, you have four children. How, how does it work in your case, and, and how did that add, to, add a dimension to this movie? Well, from my perspective, um, I'm incredibly fortunate that I don't have a nine to five job. I think it'd be much harder if I had three or four months maternity leave and then had to put my son into a, a crash. I think that must be really difficult for people. Um, there's a lot of downtime in, in filmmaking. It's also a very stimulating environment for a young child. And I think once they start to go to school, all that changes and you need to provide them with the stability so they can connect to their own peer group. But I mean, I have thousands of um, treasured memories from, um, you know, in the time in Santa Fe, that's where he learned to walk, that's where he first started to speak. And, um, and of course, I have a very understanding partner, but I don't think that just because you're an actor that, um, you know, I'm a working mother. And I think the dilemmas that any working mother faces is, is, you know, similar. So it's a juggle and you, you, you can't, you know, you have a grand plan about how it's all going to work and then you have to throw the grand plan away every week because the circumstances change and you just have to be very aware of the changing needs of your child as he or she develops. Uh, well, my, my uh, youngest is 16 and away at school and so, uh, um, um, you know, I'm, uh, but the kids have, have, have always come and visited the location and we would often move and, you know, and set up new schooling and, and basically uh, when they were younger um, we had a kind of a gypsy uh, existence and, and uh, my wife Cheryl would basically just pull together a new life and, it was, and, and the kids responded very well um, and uh, most recent, and you know, and I've always loved having them visit me on the set. Most recently, I had the experience of going and visiting my oldest daughter on her set. Uh, she was acting in a film in, in Pennsylvania, and my wife and I went there, and it was a very strange and incredibly gratifying um, sensation, I, I have to say. Your question, please. Yeah. I'm from Shanghai Morning Post. So my question is for um, Kate. So what, which ones uh, do you think more important, the Best Actress Award in Berlinale or Oscar Awards? You're all so obsessed with it, really. <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't sort of sat down and see how it affects my place in the industry. It's not something that I, I'm really <laughs> concerned. In competition? Oh, right, there you go. Um, I haven't, I don't really think about it. I mean, the question before was about how a film is received. And frankly, you just hope that the film is given um, the chance and the circumstances are right that it finds a an audience. And beyond that, I mean, it's kind of, I think you'd drive yourself nuts if you, <laughs> I think you'd be a mad woman to sit down and chart all that stuff. Your question, please. Hi, Adriana Canellas from uh, Box Office in Canada. It's a question for Ron Howard and Kate Blanchett. Uh, I'd like to know, since the media has glamorized uh, so much the, uh, the film industry these days, uh, do you think that, the, that movies can exist or can survive without all this glamour and all this hype? Uh, they did before. Um, I think it's a really part, uh, important part of um, the furtherance of culture. Um, and particularly, you know, say, in a particular instance with, with The Missing, I mean, it's the first time I had even heard the Chiricahua language spoken. So the film is often a way where 
um, I don't think it's an educational medium, um, but I think the byproduct of it is that you can actually stimulate people to find out interesting, lesser known pockets of history or um, interesting things. And I think it's a really important part of culture. There's a lot of films made, and you know, not all of them are, are, are great or have the same ambitions. And maybe you know, there's many different types of directors and actors. And, and I, I think that what's in, that um, that uh, you know the, the the sort of the public side of of, uh, of of the the work involved in getting the film seen, and that's pretty much what most what this mostly boils down to, um, is uh, um, you know in in a world where there are, there are so many options available to people, if you if you if you if you loved what you did, and 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 you hope it is a kind of a communication. Uh, then uh, you know you'll 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 do whatever you can to try to um, entice people to to come and experience the film and and it's the you know that people are saying well there's this prolifer proliferation of award shows there are too many of them and it's watering down the prestige and so forth and so on my my attitude about it is that uh, you know anything that gets people to show up uh, <laughs> is is a good thing and I can't. I can't be there myself personally, uh, you know, everywhere at every one. But uh, uh, but I'm um, uh, mostly if it's stimulating, if it's stimulating people's interest in the medium. That has to ultimately be a good thing for storytellers. In the middle, bit, your question in the middle, please. Hi, I'm uh, Joyce from Abu Dhabi TV in United Arab Emirates. My question is for Kate Blanchett. Um, we see you playing uh, very uh, intensive uh, roles and characters, and as Ron, Ron Howard said, uh, especially this year you had you played two roles like that. How do you get to to uh, pick your characters and the roles? Do you uh, does the director influence your uh, choice of characters, or what does attract you really in a character? Um, it's sort of what comes up at the time. I mean, this sort of feels like it happened by accident. Ron and I happened to be in New York at the same time, and we hadn't met. And he very sort of incidentally said, said at the end of the conversation, oh, "I'm thinking of making this film. And what are you doing in January?" And I had never conceived of of, of um, a story like this, and so I was taken by surprise. And I think, like any audience member, surprise is very exciting. So if I'm surprised by a character or a story, and also if I have no idea how to play it, then that's something which I'm drawn to. Because I think if you read a script and you think you can join all the dots and you know exactly what you'll do, then you should give it to somebody else. Because I think you need to keep your curiosity and that adrenaline um, going during the course of filmmaking to uh, keep you on your toes every day. So I guess it's that sort of, I don't know if it's fear of failure or um, biting off more than you can chew, but, um, and it's also, it's, it's great when you work with a director like Ron who really trusts you as an actor. Um, that's really rewarding and it makes you want to sort of give more than you've ever given, I suppose. Your question, please. Uh, uh, please. Um, yeah. Alessandro Giannini from Brazil. Uh, my question is for Ron Howard. Despite what uh, you have said earlier, uh, The Searchers from uh, John Ford was an inspiration. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, and other films of John Ford. Right. Well, yeah, I, l I love the films of John Ford. And, and um, um, you know, and I was a... I was a young actor, worked a lot in television and films, uh, and uh, you know, by the, I used to say that I wanted to grow up and 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 be a director. Actually, I used to say when I was eight years old, I, I would say that I wanted to be an actor, writer, producer, director, cameraman, and baseball player. Um, and I started to narrow it down. But but uh, the by the time I was 14 or 15, I knew I, I really fell in love with the movies. I'd been in it, but I hadn't really been inspired by it as a medium necessarily and uh, and it, it, it at that point uh, I discovered John Ford and Frank Capra and uh, you know as well as you know the sort of the exciting contemporary cinema of the late 60s and early 70s so it was a great time to fall in love with movies um, the uh, um, the searchers was never my favorite of his I my favorite was always my darling Clementine 
which is just a great movie, and I think Fonda's fantastic in it. And, you know, it's not 100% authentic in terms of the events as recorded, but it's great drama and great movie making. Um, and I certainly knew that we shared some similarities with the searchers, of course, um, but, but I honestly can't even claim homage or, or, or claim inspiration from the story because I really, I observed that and then I, and then I, I tried to um, sort of look away from that film and look only at the potential in this story and do the research. And of course, The Searchers, this, this film or the novel and a number of other films all took their inspiration from several well-documented um, um, e e events of abduction of, of, of women um, and by various tribes, particularly in the, along the border. Um, so, you know, we all, we all share that. It doesn't, make, doesn't mean I, you know, don't have the utmost respect for, for the searchers. Uh, I just, uh, um, I, I can't claim it as homage. The question here in front. Uh, Bodo Beuchel from Cinezone. A uh, question to Mr. Howard. Um, there's a scene when Kate and Tommy Lee are the first time on the run and they are chased by the bad guys mm -hmm. and they are rescued by three Indians mm -hmm. for the good guys and suddenly one of, uh, uh, there are only two Indians anymore. Right. How, uh, where's the third Indian oh. gone? <laughs> well, the next time you'll see it, you'll see him get shot. We, he, he, he's, he's there. But, but that brings up an important point actually. I mean, yeah, he, there were three and one guy gets shot. But the, um, but the important thing, we shot him far away because it was one of the guys, the stunt guys who was playing the other Apache from the other side and so, you know, it's in the distance. Uh, but, uh, but the violence in the film, it was this, I, I had this idea that, in, that the violence could have a kind of a double impact if we presented it almost entirely from the point of view of our protagonists, of our lead characters, particularly um, Kate, Evan Rachel Wood, and Jenna Boyd. And almost every situation is shot quite literally from their perspective. And I did find as I started previewing it for audiences that the violence, while not particularly graphic, not compared to a lot of films, was having a, a very intense effect on the audience. And when I started discussing it with people afterward, I really sensed that they, they were not only witnessing the violence and relating to someone close, you know, that they cared about uh, seeing it, but they were also acknowledging that an act of violence witnessed is also an act of violence on the witness. And so there was like a, a residual reverberating impact that, uh, was, uh, that I didn't expect. I mean, I, I, I had this sort of cinematic idea, but I didn't expect this, this extra degree of impact. And it was really an interesting um, little lesson that I learned in, in making the film. A question in the back, please. Could you stand up? Uh, sorry, I've got a tape on my leg, sir. Okay. No. Sorry. Um, it's Alison Jones from the Birmingham Post. Um, you, uh, Ron, you starred uh, in uh, Western when you were younger with possibly the most famous cowboy of all time, John Wayne. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered how your experience is compared uh, making that Western with the one that you created yourself. She, uh, she's referring to a movie, The Shootist, which was John Wayne's last film, and I, and I had a, a role in the film. Um, and um, it, 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 it only related in one way, really, and that was that Don Siegel at that time was, was shooting the film in, a ver in, in what was for the mid-70s, a very contemporary style. Um, in fact, John Wayne didn't like that, and some of the friction that they experienced uh, was was a result of the fact of, of uh, this kind of contemporary approach that Siegel was taking with the movie. The language was very authentic, and the attention to detail, very careful. The however, that film really dealt with uh, a mythic figure. Uh, the idea of any of anyone as a kind of a shootist is um, uh, pr pretty much unrecorded in the actual an in historical annals. Uh, so it was an interesting combination of you know, authenticity in the presentation and uh, a, a real uh, embracing the mythic nature of the West as, as, a, as, a, as a kind of, um, ad, you know, adventure um, fable. The final question, please, in the back, in the middle. Anne-Christine Loranger, Le Devoir, Canada. 
Uh, yeah, we have here screening also Cold Mountain, who opened the um, the festival, and uh, there's your film. There are several films uh, right now talking about women and difficult conditions at the birth of the American history. Do you feel that going back for you and for the other directors, Anteli Mengele, has to do with America trying to find its roots? From the, I, I live in Germany, I live in Europe, so I'll talk from this point of view of people that feel that America has no roots, they have no culture, it's a new country, uh, rather derogatory, unfortunately, but it's so, and I, I'm part of this also as a Canadian. Uh, do you feel that this is a way to go back and explore what made the root of the American culture? Oh, speak. I know this question was directed to you, but speaking from a, a white person from a very young country, which Australia is, yes. I don't know when you think culture starts. I think culture is a very organic, ever evolving thing. And um, 200 years, whilst it doesn't compare to. Um, artifacts from the Middle East which are you know from 1000 BC culture exists and culture develops and it's a young culture but it's still a culture and I think to say that there is no culture is a kind of a dangerous thing because it prevents one from analyzing what is currently going on I mean if you want to find um, apart from this film um, I, I think there's a really interesting book about um, American culture written by John Krakow about the Mormon development of the Mormon religion and the whole journey um, into the wilderness, um, which is a fascinating book and a fascinating perspective on an aspect of American culture. So, I mean, I, um, sorry, I know that's a sideline. No, no, it's okay. The, the uh, you know, I think, I think that <clears throat> what filmmakers are, are, are doing or discovering that they can do or sort of testing the waters maybe recently to try to under, you know, find out whether audiences are even as curious as the filmmakers are, is to go back and look at periods in American history which were were more mythologized, um, and 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 look at them in more frank terms, and um, and 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 deal with them, you know, more as a kind of a historical case study, and again, less as a sort of a popular genre. And uh, so I can't speak for Anthony Mengele, but I can speak for myself. Uh, and I know that that was that you know that was a um, a, a factor in in um, pursuing my own curiosity about this. And when you like, you know maybe Kate should just talk for a second on some of the research that she did. But I mean I was she, she came to me with photos of of women you know uh, proudly posing with their guns on the prairie, um, and some of the diaries that you read as well. And it was very interesting to you know, to begin to view that kind of survival from that perspective. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating reading the diaries of the women who made that journey west. Um, the, the stoicism and lack of sentimentality. And also the biblical nature of that journey into the wilderness. It's fascinating. Um, and I think it, it was a, I mean, I, I thought a lot about um, indigenous Australians, um, the Aboriginal culture and the emergence, recent emergence, like you're saying, of, of white Australian culture as compared to how it, um, what, what happened in America, which was not a noble fight, but a fight was fought and a victor was claimed as being the white man in America. And somehow the centre of America was claimed. And that has, has formed a very different psyche, I think, to the psyche in Australia, where every journey into the dead heart of Australia has, white man has failed. Um, and I think that that is a, what my, probably is at the, uh, possibly at the centre of the difference between Australians and Americans. So there lies a cultural difference. I, I found it fascinating. And I think that um, to say that one can't analyse something that happened 50 years ago um, as, and how it impacts upon our culture now, I think um, it's, I mean, I, I was fascinated by it. Oh, sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> anyway. Unfortunately, I have to end up this press conference. I think it could go on for hours. But thank you for Ron Howard and Kate Blanchett, and hopefully the new generation of Blanchett also like being here.